while, I believe. It's really, things haven't bothered me so
I welcome you to this piece of Remembrance Day Memorial Service. We are here to remember the men and women who laid down their lives for the sovereign and the country in two world wars and Korea. The more than 110,000 who gave their lives and thousands more who came home with honorable roots and those who are still suffering today. We must never let the people of Canada forget on this day at the 11th hour we remember the grandfathers, the grandmothers, fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, relatives, and friends who gave so much of themselves so we as a great nation could remain free. As we bow our heads in silence, we should also remember how many comrades lost or injured in Afghanistan and our peacekeepers for their contribution to world peace. Let us also remember that it has been 200 years since the cessation of hostilities of the War of 1812 and a hundred years since the beginning of the war to end wars for World War I. In closing, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome the sentiment of the day. not only to serve our veterans, but also our seniors, community, and those who are still serving our country around the world.
we better not grow old. Age shall not worry, it, worry them, weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Ils ne vieilliront pas comme nous, qui leur avons survécu. Ils ne connaîtront jamais l'outrage ni le poids des années. Quand viendra l'heure du crépuscule et celle de l'aurore, nous nous souviendrons d'eux. I would like to thank all of you for coming out for this important Remembrance Day celebration. On this day, we gather together to honor the more than one and a half million Canadians who have so bravely served our armed forces. We gather to remember the service and sacrifice of the soldiers, sailors, air crew, and merchant seamen in World War I and II, the Korean War, UN peacekeeping operations, and Afghanistan. All through the year, members of the Canadian forces stand on guard. This year's tragedy in Ottawa should give us all special cause to reflect on those that serve and sacrifice. Let us not forget about them or their families. We recognize the impact that active service has had on the families of those who have served and who continue to serve. From the Silver Cross mother, who represents the collective grief of parents, to the children who grew up without knowing a father or mother, their loss is not forgotten. 95 years ago, Remembrance Day was first observed so that we do not forget. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the start of the First World War. Canada's last World War I veteran died in 2010. John Babcock was just 15 when he lied about his age in order to enlist. We gather on this day because on the 11th day of the 11th month at the 11th hour in 1918, that war ended. World War I was heralded as the war to end all wars. Despite the incredible sacrifice of so many, sadly, this was not to be. I'm sure that we can all agree that we should not limit remembrance to this day. The Royal Canadian Legion 
has a poetry and literary contest that reaches out to school children across Canada. I want to share with you a poem from that contest by a young woman named Alice Greer Guimond. Memories fade as years go past, yet the things they've done will always last. We are free, and yet we have forgotten. Freedom is never free. They fought for our rights and for democracy. They fought for peace so we can live in harmony. They fought for you and they fought for me. We must not forget, freedom is never free. We take it all for granted, a good night's sleep of peace, while soldiers lie and weep, not knowing if they will see the sunrise, haunted by the ghostly cries of those who died. Why don't we realize freedom is never free? Freedom is a gift we cannot take lightly. Too many sacrifice too much to give it to us. I would like, though, to thank the Royal Canadian Legion for providing a home for our veterans, a place of camaraderie and support. I want to thank them for keeping the flame of remembrance alive, not just on November the 11th, but all through the year. On this Remembrance Day, take the time to honor the veterans that are here or that you may know for their bravery and heroism. Shake their hand and say thank you. Today is also a day for us to hope and pray that one day the true peace that we all desire will come to pass. And now it is my great honor to introduce Jack Aldred, a Royal Canadian Navy retired seaman. Jack is an institution here in East York, and he is the author of Tales of Todd Morton Veterans. Today, Jack will recite for us in Flanders Field. In Flanders Fields by Colonel John McRae. Well, this isn't just a poem that you and I had to memorize at school. This was inspired by the death of his friend, a Canadian lieutenant killed by a German shell. This is a plea, a hope that what he saw as a surgeon at the battlefront, the terrible loss of young lives of these brave young men in the cause of freedom. And he wants us to remember and carry on the same fight for freedom as he tells us, in Flanders fields the poppies flow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. No poppies grow in Flanders fields. To this, I would like to add what I call a sailor's lament. We know that soldiers lie beneath the rows of crosses where poppies grow. Similarly, over fields, cities, and towns, our fearless airmen were shot down. But neath the unforgiving waves are many unmarked sailors' graves. So let the little poppy represent our memories of those young lives so heroically spent. And now I'd like to introduce Dom, Dom Capel to read the uh, wreaths. Will all the wreath layers please start lining up over here? Any wreath layers come from the ranks, please go down and line up. Ryan will go one side to the other, right? Ready, Brian? Uh, ready for Ready for Marshall? Let me know when. Great Marshall. We'll go left to right, like we said, to move them up. You ready?
Victoria Cross. Memorial Cross. City of Toronto. Government of Canada. Province of Ontario. Force Canadian Division. Royal Canadian Navy. Merchant Navy. Burma Star. Korea Veterans. Hong Kong Veterans. Afghanistan Veterans. East York Hydro Veterans. Canadian Association of Veterans in the United Nations Peacekeeping. <coughs> Queen York Rangers, First Americans. Home front heroines. Airborne second forward observation unit royal artillery. District D Council. Song D3 Council, Royal Canadian Legion.
Royal Canadian Legion, Branch 10, and Lady Sixelvery. Royal Canadian Branch 11 and Lady Sixelvery. Royal Canadian Legion Branch 22 and Lady Sixelvery. Royal Canadian Legion Branch 345. 631, Sentinel Air Squadron. Fort, 48th Highlanders, Army Cadet Corps. Toronto Fire Services. Toronto Professional Firefighters Association, Local 3888. <coughs> Association of Retired East York Firefighters. Toronto Police Service. Toronto Paramedic Services. Toronto District School Board. Yeah, that's next. Oh, no, okay, sorry. Toronto Catholic District School Board. Toronto District School Board. Toronto Hydro. St. John Ambulance. French Language Catholic School Board. St. John Ambulance. CUPE Local 416. Other organizations and citizens, RSM, George McHale, 1929-2013. Neighborhood Link Support Services. East York Historical Society. Toronto East Rotary Club. A 
I'd now like to introduce the first Lent Stout Band performing the song Remember Them Well by James Sloan. <laughs> I was falling and started when the cry was heard. of clarity and in times of confusion, in times of poverty and in times of prosperity, in times of sorrow and in times of joy, in times of war and in times of peace. We know that you are always with us and we know that you are with us now as we gather once more in this place to remember those who gave their lives in war that we might live in freedom and in peace. We confess before you that we have not always fully honored the freedom that was won for us. We have often taken our freedom for granted and forgotten the obligations that go along with it. We have talked too much about rights and forgotten about duties. And we confess before you that we have not done enough to share the peace that was won for us with others in this world. We have not always tried hard enough to bring peace to other countries and we have not always spoken clearly enough on behalf of those who are unable to speak for themselves. Forgive us, we pray, for all the times when we have fallen short of the people you created us to be. Gather us together as we live in this city made up of people from many faiths and many cultures, from many lands and many nations, and help us to prove that people who are different from one another in so many ways can nevertheless still be sisters and brothers, living together in harmony and in love. For we ask this in the name of your unfailing love for us all. Amen. I now introduce Peter Ganny, immediate past District D Commander, who will read scripture for us this morning. Isaiah 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort for God's people. Comfort 
comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim her to be that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good take tidings to Zion, go up high and about. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice and shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, sovereign Lord comes with power, and his arms rule for him. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those who have young. Please join me in the prayer for world peace as it is printed in your programs. Remember, O oh God, the peoples of the world divided into many nations and tongues. Deliver us from every evil that seeks to prevent your saving purpose for all humankind and fulfill the promise of peace on earth through the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Amen. From the curse of war and the sin of human beings that causes war, O oh God, deliver us. From indifference to human suffering and a low value put on human beings, who are made in your image, O God, O God, deliver us. From the lust for money, position, and power that drives us to kill, O God, deliver us. From undue trusting in the weapons of war and mistrusting the counsels of peace, O God, deliver us. From lack of commitment and effort to the ways of reconciliation and peace, from a lack of forgiveness for past wrongs, O oh God, deliver us. From words and deeds that give rise to prejudice, fear, and hatred, from everything that prevents the human family from fulfilling your promise of peace, O oh God, deliver us. Amen. Please join me in singing the hymn, O oh God, our help in ages past.
a four-year-old daughter, and that means that my house, like the houses of many of you who have children, and especially daughters between the ages of, say, two and 17 or so, is constantly filled with sounds and images from a recent hit Disney movie. My daughter was Elsa for Halloween. We have Anna water bottles and Olaf balloons and Sven coloring books. And at any given moment of the day, it is common to hear the songs of Frozen being sung somewhere in my house. She's only seen the movie all the way through, maybe four times in total, but she knows the lyrics to all the songs. And for the most part, I don't mind that. But there's one phrase from one song that every time I hear my daughter sing it, makes my stomach turn over just a little. It's the phrase, no right, no wrong, no rules for me, I'm free. The lack of rules, the absence of the concepts of right and wrong, none of that is freedom. It is anarchy, which is a very different thing. And if we're going to continue to celebrate this day as one on which we remember the cost at which our freedom and the freedom of so many others was won, then we need to make sure that we understand what that freedom is and what that freedom is not. So let us leave this place today committed to exploring true freedom, and let us leave this place of memory and commemoration today committed to continuing to build a truly free country, the kind of Canada that is worth dying for and worth living in and that we may continue to build and maintain that kind of Canada. May the grace, love, and peace of God be with you and with all those that God loves, both this day and forevermore. Amen. Okay, I'd like everyone if you could stand for the same God Save the Queen. Pray, uh, Marshall, please prepare the palace. <coughs> Lord God of hosts, be with us yet, lest we forget, lest we forget, and now we will sing the world anthem. Marshall, please march off the colors. And this concludes our service for today. Thank you.
Fire only, stand fast. Guard, move to your left. Left. Turn.
Well, my pictures are full, I can't. 